When Queen Elizabeth II passed this year, which also marked the end of her 70-year reign, she also welcomed a king who spends almost the same amount of time preparing to replace her. This is King Charles III. He has spent a little over 70 years preparing for the royal throne, and if you look at it from the outside, he appears to have gotten a shockingly good start in terms of preparation for royal duties and more. When he delivered his first speech, he declared his intention to follow in his mother's footsteps. However, some sources claim that the king will abdicate and hand over the throne to Prince William. However, we are here to tell you that King Charles won't possibly be doing so because of the 22 reasons we have found. These are the 22 reasons why King Charles won't abdicate his throne. King Charles, who is now 73 years old, is the oldest person to become king in British history. However, in the year before Queen Elizabeth died, there were similar rumors stating that she thought of abdicating her throne and handing it to Charles. However, when news got out about Charles' divorce from Princess Diana in 1996, the public didn't favor him anymore and wanted Prince William to succeed Queen Elizabeth instead. But now, the time has come for the king himself. Will he abdicate the throne? Well, he will not because of these 23 reasons. Reason 22. The Regency Act Now, for those of you who don't know what the Regency Act protects, we're going to tell you all about it. And if you're wondering why we're bringing this up, you might as well take it as a hint that this may be the reason why King Charles will surely not abdicate his throne. Now, the Regency Act is only implemented when a ruler is physically incapacitated, which means when he or she can no longer speak or move. But royals can always do what they want, right? Well, not entirely. King Charles can't file for the Regency Act because it would mean that his spouse would have to prove this, along with other members of the Britain government, including the Lord Chancellor, the Speaker of the House of Commons, the Lord Chief Justice of England, and the Master of the Rolls. But let's say he does it anyway. Well, this may mean that the next in line, that is Prince William, would become regent, which also means that he would take over all the powers of the king, except for some matters. Reason 21. Abdication is a complex process. As we stated earlier, royals can't do everything they want, let alone abandon their throne when they don't feel like it, because it would lead to a more controversial scenario. With King Charles on the throne, it's highly unlikely to ever occur given Charles' intention to follow in his mother's footsteps. But even then, abdication is a complex process. Charles couldn't simply decide to surrender by himself. To make it official, he would need UK Parliament to pass an act of abdication. He can't just say, okay, here it's yours, William. No, that's not how it works. The throne succession is actually legislated by Parliament. But that doesn't mean that he can't step back. If he wanted it, he could, and no one could actually stop him. Reason 20. Abdication would shift the entire line of succession. There are consequences for monarchs if they decide to step down. In this case, if King Charles wanted to, it would mean that every other royal in the official line of succession, that is Prince William and Prince George, would need to inherit duties, titles, and responsibilities. This would mean that William would become king, and his son Prince George would inherit the Duchy of Cornwall. However, with titles comes a huge responsibility. Though Prince William could fulfill the duties of becoming a good king, his son would not be able to take upon the responsibilities of being the Duke of Cornwall. It would be just like how Prince Charles was in the early days of his mother's reign. He would be a minor, and there would be a lot of problems then. Reason 19. Abdication would put pressure on Prince William. Though it clearly shows that King Charles would want his son, Prince William, to inherit the throne, abdication would put pressure on Prince William which obviously is something he doesn't want to do. He wouldn't want to pressure the future line. Also, the sudden shift if King Charles abdicates the throne would put pressure on William and his son, who would have been granted a fraction of the time that Charles had preparing for his top job in the monarchy. So, the question that arises from this is, why would King Charles put such a burden on William who has not yet had the total expertise? He's only been attending Duchy of Cornwall meetings in the last few years to learn how to run the Duchy of Cornwall. Reason 18. Abdication is considered a taboo. From the earlier reasons we laid out, it does show that despite all the rules of the Britain government, King Charles could actually let Prince William take up the throne. But abdication in the whole sense would be considered taboo. Here's why. The last time a king stepped down, it was seen as a dereliction of duty. Although abdication appears to have become a popular option among other European royal families, such as in Spain and the Netherlands, 
In the UK, it's still regarded as taboo. When monarchs take up the throne, they take various vows, and if King Charles does abdicate, it means that he turned his back on God and broke his oath. Abdication fundamentally does not align with British values. The only British monarch to abdicate his throne was King Edward VIII, the uncle of Queen Elizabeth II. Aside from them, no British monarch has ever voluntarily abdicated. Even when he did, there was an uproar. The act was seen as a dereliction of duty, and there was a constitutional crisis after that. Reason 17. King Charles doesn't want to create a major scandal. Queen Elizabeth II wanted to make sure that the monarch survives even long after she is gone. So, she implemented a new rule under the Abdication Act of the UK government. This was done in 1936. According to the late Queen, this was the only way to save the monarchy and ensure its survival. However, now, we have King Charles, who is the current serving monarch. He wouldn't want to go against his mother since it would create a huge major scandal, considering that he took an oath to follow in his mother's footsteps. Reason 16. He swore he would not give up. King Charles wouldn't give up his throne even if he wanted to because he has already sworn, like his mother before God and his people, to serve as monarch until the end of his life. During his speech, he swore. As the queen herself did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself, throughout the remaining time God grants me, to uphold the constitutional practices at the heart of our nation. And wherever you may live in the United Kingdom, or in the realm and territories across the world, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect, and love, as I have throughout my life. Reason 15. He prepared taking the throne over a lifetime. King Charles could abdicate if he wanted to, but why would he even consider doing that? We all know that King Charles has had a lifetime to prepare. He's eminently qualified, and he also knows from a child's perspective just how much it sucks when your young parent suddenly gets thrust into a massively all-consuming job that they will literally do for the rest of their lives. So he would obviously not go for it even if the thought did come to his mind. Reason 14. He would require consent. It goes against established precedent, which plays the same role that a written constitution plays in most other countries. And though most people think that he can actually do it, we think that he cannot abdicate without the permission of the governments of all 15 Commonwealth realms, of which he is the king. Countries like Canada, Australia, and Tuvalu are no longer colonies, and they haven't been for many years. These independent nations could have the same king, but the king can't just decide to abandon all his duties without their consent. The same thing goes for King Charles. He would only be given permission if there is an extraordinary circumstance. Reason 13. Royal duties aren't easy for anyone to do. Abdicating the throne and handling all responsibilities to Prince William would be considered unfair since King Charles himself has a lot of experience in royal duties compared to Prince William. But even then, why should he do it, William? Having the powers of a king isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and it's not a nice job contrary to public perceptions. Becoming a king would mean zero freedom, very little privacy, and he has almost no real power except in the event of a kind of crisis that nobody wishes for, such as a breakdown or total deadlock of government institutions. It pretty much happened in Australia in the mid-1970s, in which case he'd have to use his reserve powers and get a damn no matter what he might do. Is that a job any informed sane person would be eager to take on? Charles is undoubtedly grateful that his mother lived so long and spared him from it as long as possible and William wouldn't be happy about the relative freedom he enjoys now being brought to an abrupt end while he was still young. Reason 12. A British monarch is expected to serve for the rest of his life. King Charles would certainly not abdicate the throne, and why should he? The British monarch serves for his whole life. There's no reason for Charles to abdicate unless he is forced to do so due to siege or overthrow, or more recently, because he married a woman deemed unfit to be queen. And he can't abdicate until he becomes king, he has waited a lifetime for this and has trained for it. William is young and popular, and his time will come in due course. Reason 11. He has more experience than Prince William. After the Queen's passing, the UK needs a wise person, not a younger person. King Charles has served royal duties for many years, and he's been training almost his entire life, considering that he was just 3 or 4 years old when he became next in line for the throne. So that totals to about 68 years of training. In comparison to William, who is second in line and has had approximately 40 years of training, his experience is not as extensive as Charles. Reason 10. Prince William might not succeed him. 
Another reason why King Charles would probably not abdicate is that even if he abdicated, the crown may not necessarily default to William. It would depend on the instrument of abdication, which would need to be specifically drafted by Parliament and take the abdication circumstances into account. The abdication of Charles and his entire line, in which case Prince Andrew would succeed to the throne, could very well be part of it. Reason 9. He hasn't been crowned king yet. King Charles' coronation has not yet taken place, though it was stated that he would be crowned king in a year. This was stated by Kate Williams, who was a history professor at England's Reading University and author of Young Elizabeth, The Making of the Queen. She even told People that, The coronation ceremony usually takes a year because it's seen as unseemly, really, to have a coronation ceremony straight after someone's death. It's a long period of mourning. Although at various points, there has been speculation that Charles, who is now 73, might step aside to allow his son, Prince William, who is now 40, to take the reign. However, we think it's highly likely that he would do so. Season 8 King Charles is dedicated to his people. King Charles is dedicated to the people of Great Britain. Even after he took his royal responsibilities by becoming the Duke of Cornwall, King Charles has never failed to serve his people. In fact, he has always been around the public and even conversed with them, which is something British kings don't participate in. His mother, the late Queen Elizabeth, also swore to the people of the United Kingdom by declaring, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. King Charles, who is taking up his mother's footsteps, is likely to never give up on his people. Reason 7. King is not a job title, but a state of being. Being a king is not merely a job for King Charles III. It is who he is. Like other monarchs, he wasn't elected, hired, or appointed ruler. Because the British monarchy is a constitutional monarchy, the order of succession to the throne is dictated by law. It is strictly hereditary and has long been associated with an absolute right to rule for the duration of the monarch's life. The fact that the British monarch is also the highest ranking member of the Church of England lends credence to the notion of the monarch's divine appointment, which is another way of expressing the concept of the absolute right to rule. Reason 6. Abdication is a drastic step. Abdication isn't merely retiring or taking a step back from duties. It means renouncing the throne. When King Edward VIII, Queen Elizabeth's uncle, abdicated in 1936, he set off a constitutional crisis that threatened the very existence of the monarchy. Perhaps no one understood that better than Elizabeth, who had a front row seat to the drama. After Edward abdicated, Queen Elizabeth's father, George VI, became king, and Elizabeth, his heir. It's likely that this upheaval helped inspire Elizabeth's well-known loyalty and devotion to the United Kingdom, and King Charles will probably take it further. Reason 5. The royal duties were delegated to the younger generation. Since the late Prince Philip's retirement in 2017, the then Prince Charles has attended numerous public events with his late mother, Queen Elizabeth. In 2020, Prince Charles was delegated duties by the Queen and shared royal responsibilities. Additionally, during that time, the then Queen was seen with her children and grandchildren at public events. As she grew older, she was able to take the more modest step of sharing her responsibilities with the younger royals rather than going to the extreme of abdicating. King Charles would probably do the same. Reason 4. The British people adore King Charles. Everyone loves King Charles because of various reasons. If you want to know why, we've made a separate video on this channel so do watch it. But here are some of the reasons. He is a philanthropist, a gentleman, a protective father, an environmentalist, a military cadet, and more. Reason 3. No British monarch has ever abdicated due to advanced age. King Charles would not be able to live in peace if he abdicated his throne. First of all, if he did, the public would be outraged. Secondly, it would appear that he disregarded the oath he took, which is to follow Queen Elizabeth's example. And thirdly, no British monarch has ever abdicated due to old age. Additionally, King Charles' abdication would indicate that he has no regard for the Church of England's doctrine. Reason 2. Royal Chances of Survival Prince William and his wife Catherine, Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge, have emerged as the models for contemporary royalty in spite of all prior hostility toward royal regalia and media evils. William has also made definitive moves to focus on the throne, unlike his brother Harry and wife Meghan, who are living the American dream. But that doesn't mean that he is ready to take over the throne. Also, King Charles wouldn't want to burden William with all the duties that is required of a British ruler. Reason 1. He's got a lot of plans to implement. It is well known that Charles likes to unwind and informalize the throne. 
According to rumors, he plans to leave Buckingham Palace and convert it into a royal office complex and museum, keeping Clarence House as his London residence. A popular gesture would be to connect Whitehall and Kensington Palace with a lush corridor made of the expansive private gardens of the palace and Green Park. Additionally, Charles would be wise to remove much of the nonsense that developed around the idea of a royal family under his mother. An heir to the throne may be required, but an extended family need not benefit from, or more often, endure a lifestyle unheard of by the majority of royal families in other parts of Europe. The British monarch is a historical curiosity. It has provided a remarkable amount of stability as the state's head of state as well as the Commonwealth, its imperial legacy. Its elemental nature and continued scrupulous impotence are the only aspects of its hereditary basis that can be defended. The monarch is merely the manifestation of national unity and pretended reverence in human form. But by avoiding controversy, it manages to keep its stability and respect. The new King of Britain is an ostentatious controvertist, and we can expect that his reign is unlikely to be dull. What do you think about this? Do these reasons justify? Let us know in the comments below.